heart was the blood of the blood. Glory to him. Number two, ready? Say now. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus is with him. There, whether he took me in. I can't hear y'all. Y'all say it. We do his name. Hey! That's good. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Sing now, oh, precious fountain, saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saved me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and you may come clean. Glory to his name. Say it now. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Just remain standing now. Do you know what that means? Give me up just a little bit. Um, there to my heart was the blood applied. You know what that means? I mean, when you got saved, the blood of Jesus is applied. And so God, your sins are gone. Your sins are gone. God don't see no sin no more. Isn't that, isn't that great? That's a blessing. That's why he died on the cross. The blood has been applied like it was back there in Exodus when they had to put that blood over that door and over that door. That thing would come through and said, is that a Baptist or a Methodist? He said, that ain't what I'm looking for. He said, is that a good man or a bad man? That ain't what I'm looking for. They're all bad. He said, I'm looking for the blood. And when the Lord looks over us tonight, that's what he's looking for, the blood. Amen. All right. You can be seated. Good evening. Hope everybody's had a Real good week. We're in a new week, a new month, a new year, a new decade. That's scary, isn't it? But I uh, hope everybody's had a happy new year. How many's had black eyed peas today? One person. Lord, I'm disappointed. Well, y'all, you're married to each other. One, one home. Uh, one home. Isn't that sad? People desert this, the Bible, huh? Y'all had them. I like black eyed peas over at AJ's. That's about, about the only time I ever get them. Uh, good with cornbread in them. And uh, 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 I don't know what that's supposed to do. Make you have good luck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it does anything or not. They're cheap, I, I guess. But uh, it sure is good to see everybody out tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and get right into the end of the. Uh, we still hear good reports about Sunday and what happened here Sunday. My goodness, it was. Just great. Thank the Lord for uh, the good services. And that was a spillover from winter camp. And uh, the kids all give testimony Sunday night. My goodness, it was great. And um, I sent Brother Kid a message. Uh, well, he, actually, he sent me one, asked me how, how it went. And I told him all the kids gave him. He said, great. And, and the Lord used his message to influence them. And it's been good. Good, man. If you missed winter camp, it was tremendous. Really, really good. We had fun, and it was a great spiritual time of refreshing, and God just blessed. So we're going to pray tonight. Uh, we got a lot to pray for. Let's remember pray for Miss Dot. She's still not doing well, and uh, let's, let's ask the Lord to touch her. It sure would be good if we could have her back with us at church, and, and uh, she just hasn't been getting out much at all. I uh, remember her and others that have been sick with this, like flu and stuff like that. And remember those that are traveling, it's very dangerous. This is one of the most dangerous weeks of the year for travel, last night especially. And uh, uh, 
let's pray for those traveling tonight and uh, ask God. If you got something on your heart, uh, let's let me know. I'm lift your hand. Lord knows what that is. Listen, there's people in a mess. There's people in a mess. And uh, 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 only God can straighten it out. So let's pray for people. Drugs. Uh, my goodness, drugs are like a demon, a scourge on this generation. Uh, it seems like everywhere you go, somebody said, my, my boy, my, my cousin, my uncle, somebody, somebody in the family just ruined their life on drugs. So let's remember that in prayer. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our, our heads and our hearts before you this evening, we come before you tonight, Lord, asking forgiveness of all of our sins. Everything we've said, everything we've done, every place we've went, every word we've spoke, anything we've done against the will of God, we pray forgiveness. Anything we hadn't done that we should have done, we pray forgiveness. We ask in Jesus' name that you'll cleanse my, our hearts and my heart and our hearts tonight, Lord, from anything that would hinder the moving of the Holy Spirit here tonight. I pray that you'd bless every single person here this evening. Do what needs to be done in every heart and every life. Touch every life here this evening. God, you know the need. I pray, God, you'd meet that need of every heart. Lord, I pray for those that are sick, not able to be here, those that had to work or had to, uh, had to be gone, so, Lord, uh, with family or loved ones, I pray for them. Those that are let sin knock them out, I pray, God, that you'd get a hold of their heart and get back in here. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling, fighting the battle. Lord, that you'd help them. Have you in our hearts tonight. Do what ought to be done. God will give you the glory for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to make announcements right quick, and then we're going to have a little time of fellowship. The kids are all standing here tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about New Year's, and so all the kids will be just staying here this evening, and we're just going to have a little short uh, uh, New Year's service. And... Um, so uh, let's do that tonight. Don't forget Saturday, we're going visiting. We're going visiting. Start the new year off right. Uh, let's go visiting Saturday morning. You'll enjoy it. Come praying. Bring somebody with you. All of our bus routes could need help. And if you don't want to go on bus route, well, you can take a handful of tracks and knock on people's door and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. So a good start to the new year. Make time for the Lord and his work. And then, of course, Sunday morning, Sunday school. Start out in Sunday school, Sunday morning. Uh, we're looking forward to that, the first Sunday in the new year. And right on, I was telling uh, Kelly on the way down here, I said, you know, we're going to start bearing down right now on youth rally. And she goes, oh, man. I mean, as, as soon as one thing done, it's time. Youth rally will be here before you know it. A hundred, hundred, little over 100 days, April 17th. So uh, it'll be here before we know it. We're going to have our sweetheart banquet in February. And then Easter, then the youth rally, and then it's on again, summer. So uh, uh, once January, just like 4th of July, uh, it's the top of the hill. It's downhill from here on. We're done going downhill. Don't you thank the Lord for this good warm winter we're having? It's supposed to be in the 40s, 50s, all the rest of this week, part of next week, and uh, we'll take it. Amen. Save on the heat bill. So uh, thank the Lord for that. Helps our buses and everything. All right. We're fixing to be friendly. So I want everybody just find the those snottiest looking grouch you can find and go shake their hand. Will you do that? Let's all stand right now and do that right now. Right now. <laughs>
just remain standing. Let's just remain standing for our offering tonight. All right. Ushers, come on right quick. Yes. Amen. Some of you people need to learn how to control your kids. <laughs> like that castle woman. <laughs> Uh, he got. I can't have him up here for doing announcements. All right, all right. Let's all give tonight and honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. The Lord will bless you for it tonight. If you'll give, do what's right. He's got him. Amen. He just gets passed around like a ball. Whoever wants him just throws him from one to the other, the other, to the other. That's the way they did at camp. All them girls just passed him around. All right, let's all let's all give tonight. Honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. If you did not get your offering in Sunday, let's do that tonight. Honor the Lord and he'll bless you for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Just a sweet, sweet spirit we can feel in here tonight. Lord, it's your people laughing and, and and loving and getting along with each other and everybody happy. God, we know that deep down it's got a broken heart. And I pray that you'd help them, encourage them, whatever the need might be. Lord, that those that the devil has thrown a curve at, Lord, and trying to mess up their life, I pray you'd help them to get it straight, get it right here tonight on this first day of the new year. Bless this offering. Let it be what you want it to be, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. They're going to come get a song here now, y'all. Uh, ladies, good way to start off the new year. Make sure all their mics are on over there, y'all. Amen. Oh, y'all can over here. Amen. Um, let's pray for the our, our country tonight as we enter this new year. I didn't mention it a minute ago. Uh, did y'all, I'm sure y'all heard about the... Uh, that church shooting. Sorry. One of the mics has got a, it's got a short in it, y'all. Christmas plays rough on them microphone cords. But uh, anyway, y'all heard about that church shooting down there in Texas, and how that the the men got that guy before he could kill a bunch of people. So when that happened, I purposely turned on what they call mainstream news, and they didn't hardly mention it. They didn't hardly mention it. You know why they didn't mention it? Because that don't fit their beliefs. That don't fit their agenda. Honest to goodness, they're, they're mad that that happened because it don't fit their... They should be happy, but, but, but that makes private gun ownership... In a good, that's how dumb that is, and that's how dumb people that running for office in this country is. That camera running? Oh, I hate that thing. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let's. Uh, I was going to say something else, but uh, it really ain't the whole world's business what we talk about in here. But it helps a lot of people, so we put it out. But anyway, that's a sad thing. They stopped, they probably saved 25 or 30 lives. At least, at least. So thank God for those brave men that, that stood up and done what they had to do. I mean, uh, it, it'd be, it takes a man to do that, and I appreciate them. But y'all, y'all, uh, thank God that we do still have the right uh, to bear arms in this country. Even though we're losing it, we still got it as of right now. All right, y'all, go ahead. <laughs> Struggle through my life and the choices I have made. 
Looking to the right ahead, trying to find my way. Coming to the crossroad where I caught a glimpse of him. The Savior reading back to me with him to pour my sin. No greater love is shown than on a cross of Calvary. And I decided then and there. The choice is clear to be. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me than the world is see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun? And shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become. Lauren hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame. Tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man than have riches and the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. Every time. Every time. He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. I'm about to shout right there. Go ahead. I think you ought to do that verse. That'd be a good verse song for the new year. Every decision you got to make this year, every place you go, every habit you got, you say, well, preacher, I can't do that. You'll be happier. I'll take Jesus. Amen. I'll take Jesus. Say that second one again now, y'all. Say it. Say it. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun? Shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become. Glorying hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame. Tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man than have riches and the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll take him every time. That'll be a good, that's a good motto for 2020. Take Jesus every time. You ain't going to go wrong like that. You know, years ago they come out, um, them little things, what would Jesus do? Remember everybody had them bracelets and chains and everything. What would Jesus do? And that was a little fad there for a while. And the whole, the whole thought was, what would, do, what would Jesus do if he was here? Well, he is here. And uh, I know what they meant, but... Um, Tonight, we're going to just take a little bit and uh, uh, talk about what, what we'd like, what I'd like for me and us as a church to do 
in this new year. Now, we could take, I'm not going to be long at all, uh, somebody wants to stand up and say something, you're more than welcome to about the new year. I hope everybody gets started off in your Bible. I done got text of people got started on, Lord have mercy, Jeremy's done got Genesis. He said, I'm going to challenge you to read the whole book of Genesis Wednesday. I said, the whole book of Genesis? 50 chapters today? And uh, I said, I got other stuff to do. I got to study to preach. Uh, but he made it, didn't he? He's in Exodus already. Isn't that ridiculous? You are too? What's wrong with you people? You're cultish. That ain't going to hurt you. That ain't going to hurt you. Amen. Read the whole book of Genesis. That take three, four hours, three hours. Amen. Yeah, you ever watch the Titanic? Don't say a word. I couldn't stand watching purple bodies floating around. Looks sickening to me. I, was, I, I couldn't stomach stuff like that. Uh, but uh, read the Bible three hours a day. It ain't going to hurt you one bit. All right. So I'd like to challenge you tonight. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 6 and look at verse 16, that great old verse there. And I'm going to talk about that just a little bit tonight. I'm going to preach. We'll talk about just a little bit tonight about uh, what, what we'd like to do in the new year. Everybody has... Everybody's going on a diet. Everybody's uh, going to do this, going to do that. Quit kicking your dog or something uh, uh, for the for the new year. Uh, most of them New Year's resolutions don't last till February, but that's better than nothing. Sure is better than nothing. If you do good for two days, better not doing it at all. So Jeremiah six sixteen. That's that verse where it says, "Seek the old paths." Wherein the good way is. Now I don't, I don't want us to go back to horse and buggy days. I love air conditioning, electricity, cars, all of that. But the old paths mean the ways of living, and our beliefs, and our lifestyle. We are far advanced in technology, and the world it's getting worse. I've been, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna wait till a youth rally or what, but. I've really been studying this AI, that's artificial intelligence. Lord have mercy, somebody getting murdered. Uh, was that real or is that on somebody's phone? I hope it's all right. <laughs> Back in the nursery. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're blending. They're trying to blend humans and machines. And buddy, that's getting scary. Because that's Daniel, the book of Daniel, where he talked about that tin image. Iron and clay. Iron's what robots are made out of, the metal that comes out of iron, and clay people. And uh, some of them think they had these scientists in the, this uh, research, and they kept feeding information into these robots to where now the robots can talk to each other and finally, the robots started talking to each other in a language the scientists couldn't even understand and left them out. There's out. And honest before the Lord, if they're mixing flesh in it, that means a demon can get in it. And buddy, when that happens, you've got supernatural beings walking around on this earth. That's scary. And some people believe they already are. Maybe, I don't know. There's no telling what goes on. We don't mean you don't know about. All we know is what they tell us. But I'm telling you, that book says that's going to happen. And that book said before the world was destroyed by water, the sons of God, higher beings, mixed with women and created a giant race. That's what it says. And brother, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of coming to the the, de the devil is trying. Why do you think all these Twilight movies? It's always a girl falling in love with a with a, some kind of a demonic creature. It's always that. Why do you think that is? Beauty and the Beast, uh, King Kong. I was always a. It's always a pretty girl and a beast, some kind of monster, uh, uh, and that's that's getting the world ready for that super race that's going to be walking around down here on this earth. So 2020. We used to think it was sci-fi time, brother. And me and you are living in that time. So what are we going to do? My mind's made up. I know what I'm going to do. 
I, I preached on it Sunday, and I'll get on again tonight. Tonight, I know my, my mind's made up for 2020. My mind's made up. I'm going to keep on believing the same thing I've always believed. I'm going to keep preaching the same thing I've always preached. Keep believing the same book I've always believed. Keep believing what's right's right and what's wrong's wrong. We and you say, well, don't you think we ought to let up in 2020? No, we might ought to double up. Maybe we need to start another bus ride or two. Maybe we need to have some more prayer meetings. Maybe we need to have church uh, Monday and Wednesday and not just Wednesday night. I, I, somebody said not long ago, they said, you know, most churches don't even have church on Sunday night, Brother Danny. Why don't just one service a day and back off? Do you think the Lord told them churches to do that? Do you think the Lord told churches to back off? I'll tell you what the Lord told them. He said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together, even so much the more as you see the day approach it. It ain't time to go church less, people. It ain't time to back off. It's time to pull you, you whatever, the hood down, put the pedal to the metal, brother, and uh, hit them bound with a hammer down. Ain't that right? That's what it's time to do. Floor it. Floor it. Go right into this storm we're headed into. Just like this, 90 miles an hour. It ain't the time to be backsliding. It ain't the time to be getting yourself into some kind of sin. It ain't, time, it ain't no time to be dibble dabbling with sin. It ain't no time to do that. The Lord's coming back. It's time to get your heart right. You'll mess around and get beat with many stripes if you ain't careful. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at this a little bit and, uh, and talk about it. Uh, let's talk about making a new walk, a new walk down that old path. That verse said the new, the old path. Worship. Every time your neighbors see your car pulling out of the driveway on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's a testimony to them. Every time. Every time. Listen, I've never done it. I don't think I've I don't think I've missed church. I don't even remember the last time I missed church. Man, the time I, a plane got me stranded in the airport, I had to, but I don't I don't, I chose to miss church in 30 years, I guess. And um, uh, I, I began to think about the, our, the, the way people do, the way people just say, it don't matter if I go or I don't go. Uh, and, and if I, honest to goodness, if I lived out in the community, I live where nobody can see my house except Miss B there. And, uh, if I lived in a community and I was sick on Super Bowl night, I'd pay somebody to come move my car around the back of the house so people wouldn't think I laid out of church and watched a stupid ball game. Honest to goodness, I mean, I'm not against uh, ball game. You know me, I love basketball. Y'all know how I am. But listen, people, they ain't no, it's a game. It's a game. It don't mean nothing. Listen, buddy, if, if Michael Jordan and the Golden State Warriors, the last place losers, and all them were, and the Tar Heels and, and Duke and, and Carolina, NC State, and every one of them was playing across the road Sunday morning, and it was free to get in, I'd act like it wasn't even there. And I mean that. You think I'm kidding. I mean it. I mean it. Hey, it's Sunday. It's time to go to the house of God, people. About time to get our, our priorities right and live right and serve the Lord. And do the right thing. Worship. worship the Lord. Worship Him. Worship Him. Uh, let them see your car. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, people don't die for they miss a day's work. And don't care if you even go to church or not. Uh, somebody said this. Some, why do you even go to church? Some go to take a walk. Some go to laugh and talk. Some go to meet a friend. Some go their time to spend. Some go to meet a lover. Some go a fault to cover. Some go for speculation. Others go for observation. Some go to snooze and nod. But others go to worship God. Amen. Amen. I, I love that story. You heard me tell it before. The old man went to sleep. He slept every service. He slept every single service and snored and everything else. And the preacher paid this little old boy. He said, now listen, I'm going to give you a dime every Sunday that you'll keep Papa awake. And he said, okay. So he sit beside him. And that old man goes like a, 
and he'd pull hairs on his legs, you know, and punch him and gouge him and everything. He'd jump up like that, you know, and everything. Done pretty good there two or three weeks. Finally, it got to where Grandpa was sleeping again, sleeping again. And he called that little boy. He said, I ain't going to give you a dime no more. You let Papa sleep. And he said, Papa, give me 15 cents to let him sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, way a lot, that's the way a lot of church members are. You know, that's the way a lot of church members are. They're just, leave me alone. Let me sleep. Don't bother me with the facts, preacher. Got them Z's coming out, you know, their head. Like, yeah, I'm snorting <laughs> and, and, and slobbering and everything else. Them Z's coming out the top of the church. It's, it's January. Time to get clean. New year. New decade. Ain't that something? 2020, brother. Who would have ever thought it? If you can't make a sermon out of 2020, you ain't got no preach in you. 2020 vision, I call it like a preach Sunday. Um, remind me of the story. These boys went to college, and they're all getting their college stuff, you know, and everything. So this one boy goes in the department store. He goes in the belts. He said, um, he said, um, ma'am, I'm going to college. He said, I'd like seven pairs of underwear. She said, okay, we have some like that. They got, they got, she gave him seven pairs of underwear. And he said, why is this for? He said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I wash them all. Where am I going? She said, oh, okay. Uh, his buddy come in. Uh, he said, ma'am, I'm going to college. She said, oh, I know you want seven. He said, no, I want 12 pairs of underwear. She said, 12? Why? And he said, January, February. <laughs> You know, I think it's I think that's the way a lot of church people are. Get a spiritual bath about once a month, amen. amen. Lord have mercy. I think them boys at camp have that philosophy. <laughs> Lord is turned my nose a couple of times and I walked in, it just went ring like that. Uh and I walked in that room. I think their, their socks just stand up by themselves. Uh they've been sweated in so many times. But we need that we shouldn't do that to our soul. Keep your soul clean, people. The best time to confess your sin is as soon as you realize you've done something wrong. Don't wait. It's a silly thing to sin and then go around and say, Oh man, I ain't gonna pray. I'm not gonna the Lord's mad at me. I and just go days and days and days without praying. That's crazy. Get it fixed right then. Right then, go to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. God, I know I was wrong. I, I ask you to forgive me. And, and soon, soon, if you look at something you shouldn't look at, if you see something you shouldn't see on TV, dirty music, uh, wicked thought, right then, keep yourself clean. Take a bath. Take a bath in the blood of Jesus. Keep your heart clean. Keep it clean. Don't stink. Don't go around stinking uh, spiritually. Take a new walk down that old road. Amen? Um, just stick with the old way. Uh, the old way is when, like I preached Sunday night, children were taught to obey their parents. Uh, women were taught to love their husbands and, and to be keepers at home. I know that's old-fashioned, but if you don't like that verse of Scripture as a lady, you, you're, a, you're a rebellious, wicked person. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. That don't mean a woman's supposed to stay in the house all the time. That ain't what it said. That don't mean a man can't wash dishes and change the diaper. Well, no, that's not what it said. I'm, I'm, uh, we're living in a crazy time, y'all. We're living in a time when all the women at work laugh at the other women for getting pregnant and saying, oh, boy, you're dumb. Your life's over. We don't want baby. You know, that's not natural for a woman not to want a baby. That's not natural. That's weird. Uh you know, you don't need 40, but, uh, but uh, I mean, it's not natural for a woman to say, I don't want no kids around me. God, that's unnatural. That's unnatural. Uh, the new morality, uh, who, you know, we, you know, the, in this country, we have a professed, avowed, open, practicing sodomite running for president, that mayor up in Indiana, and is married to a man. Is running for president and raised twenty-four million dollars in this. That's how much the world's changed the last twenty years. Twenty years ago, that that thing was on the books as a crime. You think God's gonna bless America? You got another thing coming, buddy. We're under the wrath of God if God's people don't get right. Run for president? 
what would his husband be? The first man? That's as weird as it gets, buddy. Don't, don't, don't start this thing about hate. I don't hate nobody. I don't hate nobody. I love everybody, but that's how wicked our generation has failed in the last 20 years. Amen? And y'all better back me up because I may not even be able to always get up here and say this. They might put people like me in jail before it's over with. God give us grace to stand for what he said was right uh, no matter what the world says or does. And if you wimp out now just because somebody at work might laugh at you, what are you going to do when it really gets bad? Listen, we better take a look, walk down the old road. Better take a new walk with our old with our wallet. Uh, you know, the more people make, the stingier they get. I know people can tithe good when they've made a hundred dollars a week. A long time ago, they give ten. Now they make a thousand. They say oh, that's too much money. I ain't no hundred dollars. Uh, you get to keep nine hundred, you stingy brat. I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's pray you'd get a reduction back to making a hundred again. Can't pay your tithes. You're making too much money to pay your tithes. You need a, a cut in pay. Amen. I remember, uh, you know, you know, the first sign you know you're getting backslid was you start wanting to hold that tithe money back. These people sitting right here, I don't know who. I guarantee these people sitting right here in this room tonight. You steal God's money every week and sit right there and let everybody else work hard and pay the bills. And you sit right there and be, and you know what? That's it. The devil will work his way in other areas of your life through that open door right there. I ain't saying that for me. I don't, I don't preach for money. I preach for the Lord. Uh, I get I get uh, paid by the, the pastor. I don't get paid for preaching. I preach because I'm called to preach. I preach, well, you give me anything or not. Uh, but that pastor now, that's a job. Uh, but uh, listen, I'm going to tell you something tonight. I, I remember Corey, my youngest daughter, Corey. You know, uh, one time I had her about... Uh, she's younger than Frankie. Uh, 18 months, and, her, and she got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. She's about she's about three or four. And I come through the house one night. I set her on the the bar in our kitchen. We have a, a bar there in the kitchen, and I set her right there. I said, "Honey, stay right there. I'll be right back." And I was over here doing something. We was getting ready to go somewhere. Or something. And there's thirty dollars laying on the on the on the ca uh, counter. A twenty dollar bill, ten dollar bill. And I came back, and she's just tearing it all to pieces, just tearing it up in little pieces. Ah! What you doing? What? And, and, and you know what? I grabbed that, and I I worked forever trying to glue that, put tape on it, trying to get it put back together, and she tore it all to pieces. And I got to thinking about that. You know, as a baby, I, that money don't mean nothing to her. It don't mean nothing to her. And I'm going to tell you something, people. When your heart really gets right with the Lord, money don't really, it don't really mean nothing. Don't get me wrong. You got to have it. We have to have it to live. You got to have to buy groceries. You got to pay your bills. You got to pay your power bill. You got to buy a car. You got to put gas in. You have to have money. But when you're right with God, money ain't your God. I told some people not long ago, I said, well, I raised my kids not to worship money. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but it ain't God. It ain't God. And the day's going to come when you'll realize it ain't God. Because you can have all of it in the world. It ain't going to help you a bit. When it comes time to die, when it comes time with problems, money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy love. Money can't buy health. Money can't buy uh, a good relationships. Money can't buy blessings. Everything that's really important, money can't buy it. Now, look, I hope all of y'all get rich. I do. I pray God will bless every one of y'all. You'll make more money than you ever have. Pay your time. We'll build us a big building out here and have us a big kitchen in it and a place for the kids to play. I'd love to do that and not give me a dime of it. I mean that. I mean it. I mean that. Uh, you you give us a you give us a million dollars and we'll build a building out there and uh, have kids and I won't take a penny of it. I'll put my my part in with it. But money can't buy you happiness. It, it, you're just like when you're right with the Lord, you're just like her. Don't mean nothing to it. it ain't nothing. And we need to get that mentality as we enter into this new year. And then let me say another thing right quick, and I'll give you all a chance to talk. If anybody wants to talk, say something for the new year. Um, we need to get a, 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 a new, fresh zeal for, for a place of prayer, a place of prayer. Uh, uh, I don't know. 
if, if you're like me, you probably are, praying faithfully and scripturally is the second hardest thing for me to do in a Christian life. The hardest thing for me to do in Christian life is fast. The second thing is pray. I'm telling you, I make up my mind I'm going to pray and I do real good for a day or two and I pray and then I catch myself getting shorter and shorter and cutting it shorter. Uh, before the before the camp meeting, there was a couple of weeks, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in my prayer closet an hour every day, an hour every day. You can do other stuff. You can fool that phone. I bet you, I bet you the average person in here today has messed with a phone two hours. If you hadn't, you will before you go to bed. I guarantee you the average person in here. And some of you way more, way more to average out for the ones that done 15 minutes. So uh, I, I, get, I get down there and I say, I'm going to pray, Lord, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray. And I get up there and, and uh, I think I need to do this and I need to do that. And I told somebody I'd call them. And I told somebody, you know, and, and the, the worst thing you can do is take your phone in there where you're praying. Because you'll, you'll text somebody or they'll text you. So leave it out. Leave it out. And pray. Maybe this year. Make up. You're going to pray. Maybe tonight. Um, I was going to stay up and pray in the old, out the old year and in the new last night and went to sleep early. I never did. I've been watching that service almost every year since I've been saved. And uh, they, they all went down there to my crisis watch that service last night. Um, since we, we had winter camp, we didn't have one. And, um, but I, I went to sleep, I don't know, it was probably like 11. And um, I woke up and I was getting, I was getting Happy New Year text uh, late last night and her all day today. And uh, I, I thought maybe I need to pray more in 2020. Listen, we need to pray for revival. We need to pray for marriages. I've never seen the devil tear up more marriages than he is today. And buddy, when he tears a marriage up, you know what he's after? Them kids. He wants them kids. He don't stop and just say, oh, well, got them busted up. He's after them kids. And sometimes it's years and years and years down the road. Before I, I counsel people all the time. And it's so, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking what the devil's doing to marriages. Y'all, if you're, if you're having marriage trouble, talk to me. Go somewhere. Find a preacher. Sit down and talk. Try your best. Sometimes it's impossible. I understand that. If one won't, there ain't nothing you can do. If one won't. But if you possibly can, save it. Save that marriage. God will bless and honor that. We need to get a new desire uh, for that. Uh, and, then, and then let me say another thing right quick before I hush. Um, we need to get uh, the reset button and take a new sight at the saints. A new sight at the saints. I've noticed something about pastor and church for years. I know that church people are bad to hold grudges. And I know people that's been mad at each other for years and years. Some of them don't even remember what they're mad about I, and won't speak to each other. Families won't speak to each other. They don't like them. They don't like them. And they kids don't even know why they don't like them. They just heard mom and daddy say, we don't like them. We don't like them. And they're so dumb. They talk about it in front of their kids and their kids grow up not liking each other. Listen, you are full of the devil. If you get in your car and on your way home, you talk about other people in the church and their kids and stuff in front of you, even to your mate, let alone in front of your kids. Amen? You sure are. Don't everybody shout all at the same time. That's right, brother. And you say, well, Brother Danny, you know good and well, people. I know we all say stuff. I get it. But you are crazy if you're, if you're just because somebody don't do something exactly like you or maybe they allow their kids to do something or not do something that you let yours do. Really, it ain't none of your business. I'm, I'll, I'm like old deputy dog. I'll do the preaching around here. <laughs> and don't you forget it. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. We got a preacher. It's not your job to straighten out everybody else in the church. That's why we have a preacher. I get up here and Young's don't even know who deputy dog is, do you? I have no idea. Uh, but 
uh, uh, but I, I, that's what you got a preacher for. That's why you got a preacher. If I get up here and just blast it and let it fall where it will. It's not your job. Well, I'll just call her and tell her what I think. You better just ask God to get the demons out of you. That's what you better do. That's what you better do. You better plead the blood of Jesus and get your heart back uh, uh, before you start judging everybody else in the, in the church. Lord, have mercy, uh, brother. Uh, uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Amen. Um, I had people, a lady told me one time, she came up to me and she said, Brother Danny, I think you need to preach a sermon on da 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 da. Tell these people. And you know what? There, something in me runs up and say, Well, it'll be snowing. You know where, where I preach what you tell me to preach. That's what I wanted to say. But I didn't. But that's the truth. They, her or nobody else going to tell me what to preach, what not to. If I, I'm, if I do that, I'm done, brother. If I let people start controlling what I say and what I don't say, we're, we're shot. And I can't do it. I, if you have a suggestion, I will definitely listen and pray about it. Don't get me wrong. I, if you say, Brother Danny, preach on this, please. I will definitely pray about it and do the best I can. But we, it's... <laughs> It's not, your, it's not your job to say, you need to straighten so-and-so out. Uh, that's, that's a very, very, that's not really uh, your calling, amen? Uh, uh, sometimes sometimes people just, like that, like that guy said, uh, he had this dentist coming to his church, and they come all the time, and he quit coming. And the preacher went over to visit him. The guy was a dentist, well-to-do in the community. And he said, man, why don't you come to church? He said, I'd just rather not talk about it. He said, come on, man, there's got to be a reason. He said, I don't want to talk about it, Pastor. He said, look, I want to know why you won't come to church no more. He said, okay, I'll tell you. He said, I just got sick and tired of people singing hymns through teeth that they won't pay for. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he said, well, and he said, these people are a bunch of crooks, and they owe me money and won't pay their bills. And I got to thinking, I thought, you know, you know, if you owe somebody in the church money, pay them for heaven's sake. I don't have nobody in mind when I say that. There are people that owe me money. Not sitting here tonight. Everybody I've ever helped, just about a thing of a person actually paid me back. About ever on the rest of them never did. <laughs> and that's a sorry testimony. That's a sorry testimony. If, if, if you let if somebody lets you borrow a hundred dollars and help you in a hard place and everything, and my goodness, pay them back in the house of God, y'all. Just stuff like that, just little stuff like that. You say, ah, they forgot it. No, they ain't. <laughs> People don't forget it when you owe them money. Uh, I remember one guy a long time ago, twenty years ago. I gave him, I let him guy have six hundred and fifty dollars to bail his son out of jail. And he, they promised me faithfully, we'll give you $100 a week. We'll give it back to you, Brother Danny. I think I've seen him one time. And that was 20 years ago, and I still have hard feelings. No, I don't. I don't have no hard feelings now. Really, I don't. But you, it's not right to do people like that. It's not right to do people like that. Uh, I quit bailing people out. That's usually not a good idea. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let's take a new walk. Start all over again. This is it. I'm through, I promise. Get a new sight at a center. Get our sights on some centers. Let's zero in on some centers. I preached on that, that focus, and I told you what 2020 vision meant, why people say he's got 2015 or he's got 2040, he's got 2200. You're blind. You're legally blind to 2200. And I believe a lot of people are spiritually blind, brother. You're 2200 in both eyes. Get your sights on a center. Wouldn't it be... Wouldn't it be a blessing if every one of us come to the altar tonight and Miss Desi's coming and we said, Lord, put a sinner on my heart. You know somebody's not saved. We was, I'll tell you a story about my other daughter, Krista, my middle one. We was going through a drive through one time back when you drove through to pay gas. Used to, you could just get your gas and drive through and pay for it before they had credit cards. She's about four years old. And she'd watched me, and I was paying for the gas. 
and the person reached out here to get my money and everything, and I, she was giving it. And right when we were getting ready to pull off, she said, well, ain't you going to tell him he loves him or something? I said, yes, hush, you little brat. No, I didn't. I thought, you know what? She put me on a conviction because she'd heard me do that so much. And, I, and I'd forgot it. I was all wrapped up in where I was going, what I was doing. You know what? We need to get back to that. We need to get back to simple things like giving out tracks. I don't know why it is. People, when they first get saved, they take tracks, they give them out. They want a bumper sticker on the car. The longer you're saved, the less you do stuff like that. And all I got to say to you, you know, if it was right then, it's right now. Let's get back where we need to be and start out this new year right. Go ahead. Let's stand. Bow our heads for prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's just come and pray tonight. Anyone wants to, everyone at will. And let's just say, Lord, I want to make a new start. Get in the bus ministry. Drive a bus. Visit for the Lord. Ask Him right now. What do you want me to do, Lord? Pay tithes. Be faithful to church. Quit that sin. Quit that sin. Whatever it is. Drugs, alcohol, lying, cheating. Stealing. Why don't you let the Lord help you? Listen, it'll never work out when you're not doing right. Your life will never go right when you're doing wrong. It won't do it. I'm telling you right now, the book says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It'll come back to get you. It'll bite you one day. It'll bite you one day. It'll bite you one day. Be sure, the book says, be sure your sin will find you out. Be sure your sin will find you out. Settle it. Settle it. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, do what needs to be done in our hearts tonight. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church in these dark days, in this new decade, in this new time that we live in. God, help us. God, have mercy on us and help us. God, have mercy on us and help us. Lord, bless every member here tonight. Bless those that are struggling, those that are fighting battles. I pray that you'd move in every heart. Do what ought to be done in our lives. God, meet back with us Saturday morning to visit, Lord, and, and God, fill us with the Holy Spirit. And bless everybody and have you in our hearts. We'll thank you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right. All right, we got tracks on the wall back yonder. We might have some bumper stickers. Miss Caitlin might open.